My name is Martin, Martin Jew, J-U-E. Uh, I live in Starkville, Mississippi, and I am the founder, president, owner of MFJ Enterprises in Starkville. We make ham radio equipment, uh, and we make more pieces of ham radio equipment than any other company in the world. I was uh, born and raised here in Mississippi, grew up in Hollandale, Mississippi, which is in the Mississippi Delta. And um, I've, I've been all over the country and many places in the world, but the only two places that I have ever lived was in Hollandale, Mississippi and Starkville, Mississippi. Born in Vicksburg, Mississippi. We always lived around that area, Vicksburg, Rolling Fork, Greenville, but we settled in uh, Hollandale, Mississippi, and my father built a little country grocery store back, um, I think it was 1948, a long time ago. That's where I grew up, went to Kidney Garden, graduated from high school there, and went to Mississippi State University for a degree in electrical engineering, went to Georgia Tech, got a degree in electrical engineering, and after I had gotten my brand new degree, master's degree in electrical engineering from Georgia Tech, I went back home and ran a tiny little grocery store for my brother for about six months. He wanted to travel, but after that uh, I took a job, worked for a year designing military electronics uh, up in uh, Champaign-Urbana, Fort Wayne, Indiana. And then one evening I got a call from a professor at Mississippi State uh, University and he wanted to know if I wanted to come back to work on a PhD. He, he had some money for me. Well, I didn't really want to work on a PhD. I just wanted to come back home. So I came home, I finished all the coursework in three semesters, started working for MSU, and that's where I started MFJ, my company. It was first a, uh, an engineering design company to design electronic circuits for the uh, research departments at Mississippi State. But it didn't take me very long to figure out that all I could do was all I could do. I couldn't get big very fast because I was doing all the work by myself. So because I was uh, interested in radio and had been a ham radio operator for since I was in high school, I came up with some ham radio products and designed some ham radio products and had other people build them, uh, people that I hired and from that, we grew from two little tiny kits selling for $9.95 to making more pieces of ham radio equipment than any other company in the world right here in Starkville. When I was a Cub Scout, eight years old, in a Cub Scout handbook, I built a foxhole crystal radio. These were the radios that the World War II soldiers built. And they used old rusty razor blade and a pencil lead and some earphones they could scrap up. And they could listen to broadcasts and so I, I built one. And I was fascinated with radio. Never could get the radio to work, but it got me interested in it and fascinated in it. And when I got interested in um, radio, um, we had some old electrical uh, books in our uh, high school, our grammar school library, which I checked out. And these were really old books. I mean, I would, this was when I was growing up, it was back in the 50s, and these books were like back in the 30s. But I read them in old magazines, and I just learned all about it. And somehow I found out about ham radio uh, because I was listening to a radio that I built in bed one night, and I heard this voice come on. And it, I could hear one side, and I could tell he was talking to someone. 
the next day, a few days later, I went around town hunting for this guy and I found him. He was a radio TV repairman and he happened to be a ham radio operator. So I started learning about ham radio and got my ham radio license and I had been interested in it but I just didn't know enough, uh, had enough places to get information until I met this ham radio operator and got my ham radio license and built my transmitters and receivers and was able by using Morse code to talk to people all over the world from my little uh, uh, place in the back of the store where we grew up. I had my ham radio uh, station in the attic so I had to climb up into the attic. There's no floor there so I had to lay some pieces of wood there and uh, string up an, an antenna <clears throat> and from wire that I took out of old discarded radios that I got from the radio TV repairman and uh, able to make contacts all over the world using Morse code. In that era that I was growing up back in the 50s um, just about everybody uh, were in their own business. You know, we didn't have these big corporate jobs back then. You know, they were like shoemakers and they uh, laid bricks and they were welders and they were grocery people. You know, they were doing their own thing. So when I was growing up, I thought everybody was in their own business. So I just naturally knew that I was going to go into some kind of a business and uh, my interest was in radio, in engineering, so I went to Mississippi State and got the electrical engineering degree and somehow I was going to combine those two things into a business and I had, the only job that I had ever had was that one year uh, working uh, after I ran the grocery store, after I got the master's degree in uh, electrical engineering from Georgia Tech. Now, while I was working on a PhD, I, I worked at MSU, but uh, teaching and doing some research work, but I was really starting a business by, back then. But my whole goal was to start a business. That's what I thought I was supposed to do. Yeah. <laughs> I think the most valuable part of my career was to struggle. Yeah, starting off with not having anything and just keep pushing. I think the most important ingredient of success is want to. That's my country boy way of saying it, is want to. You got this burning desire that nothing is going to get in your way if it does, if you get knocked down, you just get back up and you do it all over again and eventually it's going to work. Yeah. I mean, I was doing everything by myself. I mean, the first place we had was a room, a hotel room that I used to make stuff downtown, old beat up run down hotel that I rented for $16 a month, 50 cents a day. And I was doing everything by myself, taking orders, making the product, shipping it, writing the ads. And I used to take these bags of parts to my classes that I was teaching and kind of wave them around and ask if any of my students wanted to put these things together for 25 cents a piece, and that was our first production line. I had I had enough where we could ship stuff. Yeah. And I had a uh, friend who taught eighth grade, and he got some of his eighth grade students to help us cut wire. <laughs> Anytime students get hands-on experience, it reinforces what they learn. It makes things real for them. I didn't get patents, 
because uh, first of all they're very expensive it just takes a lot of time so what we depended on was being able to outsell I mean our whole concept was to do so much advertising that people would buy ours and also come up with products that are so unique that no one else had them so when you do that it takes a long time for people to catch up and we've had some products and one of them I'm pretty proud of is uh, was a product uh, that I did uh, one Sunday afternoon I was trying to design a product to do something and then it occurred to me I could make it do this and that product became that during that afternoon and it was a product that measure SWR and antenna characteristics and it had never existed before and it allowed hams to uh, make sure their antenna worked properly and, um, and that uh, product was copied by everyone in the world it's made all over the world now and it uh, sprung an entire industry making that product but there was no patent on it but it was okay because we just outsold everybody for such a long time there's more of those products uh, with our brand name on it being used than all the rest of them put together. Uh, our main thing was that we knew how to sell products. I mean, we were the first to run full page ads, the first to have toll free telephone lines, which were new back then. We were the second company in ham radio to have a watch line like that. In fact, in November, I forgot which year it was, but we brought out a new product line of antenna tuners and put in a watch line. And in that one November, we sold more than we had sold in the entire previous year. Find something that you love to do and that you want to do uh, whatever it is that you do will turn out into a good livelihood. I mean, you don't necessarily have to start off with the idea of getting rich because you will eventually get there. Just do what you want to do. I've been doing this for almost 50 years and I have never worked a day in my life. I'm thankful because uh, I was able to do what I love to do every day. Like I said, I never come to work. I always come and have a good time every day. I'm able to provide many jobs for over 50 years to people, many people who have been with us for over 40, 45 years and we have touched the lives of many people, not just employees, but hams all over the world. There's, uh, I'm proud that, that most ham radio station have at least one of our products in their shack. Whatever you do, do the best that you can. And it doesn't matter what it is and do it right. I mean, don't just do it, but do it right. In the end, everything is going to uh, work out good for you. I mean, if you do things right, things will happen. If it doesn't work to begin with, you keep on working on it. I think one of the secrets that I have in solving problems is um, I keep thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it until I find a solution and it always comes. But that's the advantage. You never quit thinking. And, and, and remember, if you ever say that I can't do it, well, you can't do it because you have already decided that you can't do it. So 
instead of giving all the reasons why you can't do something, don't spend that time doing that. Spend that time thinking about how you're going to do it. And if you do that, you're going to figure out how to do it. You work hard, you keep working, it's going to happen because nothing can stop you.